Will I ever get married, Jesus? That's the question that maybe you are asking. Many people, single Christians, are asking that question today. I asked that question too for many years. First of all, let me encourage you that I really believe that it is God's will for almost everybody to get married. It is not good for people to be alone. And God has put that need for marriage and for a family in almost everybody's heart. So I believe that in almost every case, I would say about 98% of all cases, it is God's will for you to get married. And my friends, I know what it is to be a single Christian. Here's my history. I came to Jesus in 1979 by myself in an empty church. Before that, I had never prayed in my whole life. I was a college dropout. I dropped out of Vanderbilt University in my third year. I was a severe stutterer. I could hardly talk. I could not say my wedding vows later on. I had been on drugs, especially marijuana, for 10 years. That's one reason why I dropped out of Vanderbilt. I had been drinking for 15 years, smoking cigarettes for 20 years. I was a party animal. I orgies, dates, uh, bars, dating a married woman, uh, a dark life, just women dating, that kind of stuff. And little did I know that when I came to Jesus, he cut that lifestyle radically in one day out of me. As a matter of fact, I was celibate. I had no sex for nine years until I got married. God did not even let me date. He prevented me from dating. And today I think that Christian dating, people disagree with me, is highly dangerous. God told me, I don't want you to date. I want you to wait for your wife to come. And what got me really angry at God back in those days was that I saw all my friends getting married before me. Has that happened to you? As a matter of fact, I would say to God, God, this is really not fair. I fasted more than them. I've obeyed more than them. I read the Bible more than them. I pray more than them. I go to more meetings more than them. It didn't seem fair. Many days and many months, I wet my bed with tears. because I was so lonely. One day, in my desperation to get married, I went on a seven-day fast, and God did not talk to me. At the end of the fast, He spoke to me one word, no. So, I was angry at God for a long time, and I'm going to do this series as a multiple series because this thing of Christians being single and wanting to get married, I think it's a huge issue in the church. And rightly so. People want to get married. People want to have a family. So, what happened in my life? Today I want to tackle two things. The first thing that, the first problem that I had in my life was this. My history as a college dropout and the drugs and the drinking and all that stuff, when I came to Jesus, I had no job. I had no career because I was a severe stutterer. I had a hard time even speaking to people. So when I came to Jesus, my first job was in Miami as a janitor in a condominium cleaning toilets and mopping and mopping floors, making $5 an hour. Then I was promoted to serving ice cream in an ice cream shop. That was God's promotion. And then I was promoted to being a, being a filing clerk 
for my dad in his insurance business. But God said to me, you know what, Jose? On $5 an hour, you cannot get married. So one of the things you need to ask yourself is, is money an issue? May God, may, may God be preventing me from getting married because of a lack of money. In my case, God told me, you need to go back to school. So I went to a career, a, uh, sorry, I went to a trade school. And little did I know that as I finished with that trade school, see, but I had to obey. I had to step forward to obey God. Things did not happen by magic. As I finished my trade school, God opened up a door for me to work in a Christian TV station in Miami. And little did I know that I was going to be in broadcasting for 22 years. So, while I was working at my job at the Christian station in Miami, making $5 an hour, my boss left to be hired by Telemundo Network, who was just starting out in Miami in the 80s and one day I received a phone call from him and said hey there's some jobs at Telemundo paying over eight dollars an hour do you want to apply and I said heck yeah oh yeah so I left the Christian TV station I got hired by Telemundo and when I started making eight dollars and some cents an hour that's when God brought my wife so the first point is money is God asking you to make more money and the second point that I want to uh, talk to you about today is the issue of excess baggage, bringing baggage into a marriage. In retrospect, I'm so grateful that God had me wait those nine years and that God had my wife, whom I did not know, wait for those nine years in England and in Colombia as a missionary before God brought her to me. And I will talk to you that, that in these next few days, how God brought her to me. Because we got rid, God got rid of the excess baggage, the, the, the drugs, the insecurity, the rejection, the drinking, the darkness, the, the, the pornography. He got rid of all that stuff. So my wife and I did not bring excess baggage into our marriage. And we've had almost a picture perfect marriage. In 31 years of marriage, we have not had one disagreement that we've not been able to solve on that same day. And a lot of my friends that got married before me, especially young, they, they came with a lot of excess baggage. They came with a lot of problems that they had to resolve in their marriage when I resolved my problems before marriage. And they spent those first few years in hell and some of them have gotten divorced. So, and many Christians today have a lot of excess baggage because we minister to them. Find out what excess baggage you have. If you're still if you're still a single Christian and you're wondering why God has not brought you your mate and you're already making enough money, the case could be that God wants you to get rid of all excess baggage. Cut out the fat. Say, God, really make a checklist and say, God, show me every problem that I have. That, is, that, that you want me to get rid of right now, that you want to set me free before marriage so that I don't bring this into my marriage and then we can go on and do what you're calling us to do. And also pray for your mate and say, God, I also pray for my mate that you would uh, cut out the excess baggage from him or his or her, or, or her life. So when God brings you together, and I think that the early 30s is a good time to get married. Because if you've been a Christian, you have a lot more maturity and you've cut out a lot of the baggage and you bring freedom and then you can focus on doing the, the will of God instead of dealing with the excess baggage. Well, tomorrow we will talk more in part two of when will I ever get married, Jesus? So have a great Wednesday and many blessings to you.